to our 2011 Cool Chemistry Show. Are you ready for some exciting science? Good. Okay, and we're going to start off with an experiment, and then I'll go into a little bit more description of what we're going to do this evening. So, first off, we have Crystal and Logan with methane bubbles. And you'll notice that they have an inner tube. Normally, inner tubes you would fill with air. If you're going to be floating down, lights down, please. Normally you would fill these with air if you were floating down the river, but we filled this with natural gas. And of course these are safety tubes, so it's more difficult to get the air out than it is to get the air in. But what they are doing is bubbling that natural gas through a solution of soap water.
So please come on down here to the next contestant on Cool Chemistry. So once you come upstage, please follow the directions of the students. And so what we have are two solutions and a specially made sponge. So the red sponge is dipped in special solution. So it was red, now hold up the sponge. So it's obviously changed color. It's okay to make a mess when you have plastic laid down. So now it looks like about blue-black. And dip it in the other solution. Again, mess. And it's gone back to its original red color. Okay. So this is so so just to prove the point, this is a just a regular red towel. There's been nothing applied to it, maybe a little wet, but just to show that it's a dyed one. Oh, it's a dyed one. Okay, it is a dyed one, never mind. So what this is based on are pH indicators. So if you have an acidic or basic solution, if you add in an indicator, it can change color. So again, Curtis's turn. Oh, there we go. That's a great idea with tie-dye. Tie-dye acid-base indicator. That's what the name of this experiment should be. And most of it has gone back, of course, So while that group is cleaning up, next I'm going to call Alyssa and Sarah for their flame test. They changed their mind, they want me to talk. Which is something, if you ask these students, they, they, they know that I like to talk. Okay. So there is, you can see by their poster, they have a list of different compounds. Each one of those compounds is dissolved in alcohol in each one of these squirt bottles. So, lights please. I want you to pay close attention to the colors that you see once these materials are sprayed. Spray that one again. So you'll notice the blue flame, this is a propane torch, so the propane burns with a blue flame. If it's not working, you can just skip to the next one. That was strontium nitrate. That was strontium nitrate. So what you will find with the colors that they're using is a lot of these compounds are added into fireworks into different colors in fireworks. So you'll notice when you, there you go. Is it out? So I know that one was copper because copper does green. Oh, it's boron. Oh, see, even I can be wrong. supposed to be white? No, it's supposed to be asking. It's purple. Purple. Okay, see, yeah. <laughs> color, color is always
a judgment call. So that one is supposed to be a very light purple. This is sodium chloride. So this is regular table salt dissolved in alcohol. So it's a very yellow orange. So what, what is happening is that the, the salts that are dissolved, once they are exposed to the high energy flame, release energy in the form of different colors. A little bit more flows, I think. That's green. That's the copper one. This is the copper one? Okay. Is it's it green in? There green. you go. There it's green. So boron and copper both give green. Is there one more? Yeah, this one I have to dump off, though. So this one is special. They're actually going to pour this out on a piece of slate and set it on fire. Yeah, would you mix it? And this one's supposed to be white. This is magnesium, and magnesium is always a tricky one. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, and the white doesn't always show up so well, but it does burn very well. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so next we have Kyle and John. And they're going to be doing dry ice balloons, and we need two volunteers for this. Again, I'm going to mix these up. Okay. So I have 703-559 and 703-556. Please come down to this side of the stage. Dry ice, what the dry ice is when you add hot water, 
It turns that dry ice right to a gas. It skips liquid altogether. Carbon dioxide doesn't become a liquid. And so it said, well, instead of balloons, what we have is a glove. <laughs> okay, let's try another one. Okay, we tried it with gloves. Gloves are okay, but balloons are better. So we're going to try it with balloons next. Gloves are easier because they have a larger entrance and it's easier to put in the dry ice. Balloons have a smaller entrance and so it's a little bit trickier. And please be very careful. So as I was saying, dry ice turns directly from a solid to a gas. Sublimation. It's one of the few substances that does so. So when you heat it up, and the way we heat it up is by adding water directly to the balloon. Sometimes experiments don't go exactly as planned. No, this is how we plan. Oh, this is how you plan. Okay. <laughs> so I think we'll we'll let our assistants take uh, take their balloons back with them. Yeah. It isn't easy to get them closed. So if you want to show that to the audience, if you want to turn around and show that to the audience. By itself, it's slowly getting larger. You, it's, it's hard to see right now, but it is slowly getting larger. So the dry ice, the solid dry ice inside, is getting heated. Now, we've tried this a couple of times in practice, and they haven't actually expanded they burst, so we shouldn't get some random surprises later on in the show, hopefully. But if you hear a burst later in the show, it's because eventually this, uh, these balloons burst. I'll take this out. This is some of the fun stuff you get to play with if you become a chemist. So I encourage you all to become chemists. I know not all of you will, but if you can have some fun with science or chemistry in your lifetime, please do so. So you can see already that the two balloons have really, really grown just from the dry ice that's in there turning into a gas. Okay. So I'll take your goggles, and I'll take your gloves, and you can keep the balloons. And I get my, get my goggles. Yep, throw them in there. Okay. Next we have Katie and Laura. I'm glad, I'm glad there are fans of our students in the audience. Um, and this is going to be flames without matches. So we need one volunteer. This is going to be an older volunteer. 703518. Seven oh three five one eight. Going once. Okay. supervision. Uh, my parents live a thousand miles away, so they can't watch me all the time. 
But we always think that we need some kind of spark. So even when we light these torches, there's a little there's a little flint in here that makes a spark in order to get the propane to light. But we can do it by chemistry too. So go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have tissue paper. We have a chemical called sulfuric acid. Now, sulfuric acid is pretty dangerous stuff. It's not something most people would work with. It's a very strong acid. The other thing that we need is a strong oxidant. So whenever you burn something, you burn a fuel, and you have oxygen that is part of that combustion reaction. So the, the source, of, uh, source of oxygen that we have here is <laughs> potassium permanganate. So that happened a lot faster than I expected. <laughs> and I think that they expected. So, uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so one of the great things about doing science is that sometimes you're very surprised by what happens. Uh, like that, see I was in the middle of saying something and it just went up. So, the combination of the acid and the potassium permanganate provided the spark, and the tissue paper, as you can see, just went up. Um, and now we've got a little bit of the, the ashes that are coming down like snow. So it's like me in Wisconsin. <laughs> As you can tell, I was very tired of the, of the winter before long. Okay, so now we have our next group, Ta Yi Jar Ia. Their first one is going to be like a pony powder. They're actually going to stay up and do a second one, but we'll have them come up to do their first one now. Again, we need a volunteer from the audience. This is 703472. This is one of my personal favorites, and, and go ahead. Okay, so, what they are putting on the lab bench right now is lycopodium powder. It is a, lycopodium is a moss, and when it's dry, you'll notice that it does spark a little bit, but it doesn't actually light on fire, you just lit the tissue paper on fire. But, if you can somehow disperse that lycopodium, oh sorry, I took that away. If you can somehow disperse it, okay, so. Now, Using a piece of paper and a lycopodium that way is sort of the crude way of doing it. These guys have developed a much better way of doing this and a much safer way. So this is where our helper. Well, let me get the let me get this. One. This one 
is actually, oh, I should, I, I need to make sure I have my dots on. This one is actually one of the few that we don't, we have that doesn't involve play. Which I think is disappointing to some people. So what our assistant is doing is increasing the pressure inside the tube. And we're using just a simple bicycle pump and we've attached it to a rubber stopper. So we'll try this, we'll try this one more time. So what happens when you add pressure originally and then you release that pressure, there is alcohol inside and that alcohol, alcohol instantly vaporizes and makes fog. When you add pressure again, the fog disappears. And then once we take off the stopper again, you create fog inside again. So it's simple change in pressure. One more, we'll do one more. The alcohol we're using inside is just simple rubbing alcohol, which is 70% alcohol. Okay. I'll take the glasses. I don't want to lose my special glasses. Okay. Now, the next pair we have is Alonzo and Mike, and we have Glowing Fountain. So I think we need, how many helpers do we need for this one, Alonzo? Two? Okay. Two helpers. Pick one and I'll pick another. Okay. 703 481 and 703 503. So 481 and 503. You can go down the end of the stage there. Okay, so this is a take. How many how many people out there you can clap? How many people have seen Diet Coke and Mentos? Okay, I can see a lot of hands here. One, one of the most famous experiments you can do. Now, this group found one that's a little bit different. The premise is the same. However, they're using tonic water instead of Diet Coke. Can we have the lights down, please? So you'll notice what we have, what Mike is holding is a black light. And you'll notice if you lift, if you look at, as Alonzo is holding up the, the container of tonic water, the tonic water glows. There is a compound in tonic water called quinine, and quinine will glow under the black light. And so what we hope to have with adding Mentos to these tonic, uh, tonic water bottles is a glowing fountain. So that was that was the first one, and now we're going to have our help, helpers do it. So this is why we have a team board. Your 
So even when pouring that liquid nitrogen into the bowl, it instantly turns into a gas. So oftentimes, if you see in a show, so, so we're doing now the opposite of what we did with the dry ice inflating the balloons. Now we're shrinking them. So the dry ice is so cold that it's actually turning the air, cooling the air so much that the air shrinks inside the balloons. Although it's, it's hard to dip balloons in liquid nitrogen because they float. You can actually hear it. It's, it's, maybe I can hold the microphone. No, it doesn't work. You can actually hear the, the, the material of the balloon actually sort of cracking. So now we're going to try actually dipping something a little bit. So the next is a rose. I think it's just fun to watch it sort of vaporize over the side. So if you hold any object at room temperature in liquid nitrogen long enough, it will solidify. In fact, it will become very, very brittle. That actually works really well. Try again. Just try Try one more time. See if you can. So the soft rose petals become so brittle they'll just crack. Yes, we need we we need gloves for this one. So what, the, what Nick is going to do now is pour some of this liquid nitrogen into warm, soapy water.
eventually that'll warm up, it'll be easier to clean, but right now it's a little too cold. So we'll, we'll move on for now, so thank you. Okay, so next we have another group of four. They'll be doing two different experiments. One of them is, uh, oh sorry, the group is Nick, Jimmy, Aaron, and Travis. The first experiment they're going to do is a non-burning towel. So we don't need any volunteers for this one, we will for the next one. So. Do you guys need a, a bill of some kind? Yeah. Yes. I didn't bring a hundred. So I'm going to volunteer a dollar bill for this. So what they are going to do is not burn, hopefully, the dollar bill that I've provided. Or the towel they have. So what they're doing right now is mixing rubbing alcohol, again, with a little bit of water. You can do it for you. You can do it right there. We can, we can let, the, we can let the, uh, the rose and stuff warm up. So what they're doing is with this mixture, is soaking a towel with it. Yes. So the alcohol right now is burning. Is that supposed to go out? But if you look at the towel, the towel is unsinged. So now they're going to do it, so that was a proof of point, now they're going to do it with my dollar bill. I, 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 would, I, I think I said that I would volunteer a hundred dollar bill, but I got kind of skittish. I didn't want to, I didn't want to offer a hundred dollar bill. Now, what's very important about a dollar bill, a dollar bill is not paper. It's actually cloth. One of the reasons why we have uh, the dollar bill as being cloth is that then, you know, they don't rip as easily as it would be if it's paper. So if this was paper, it would burn relatively easily even under the mixture that they have. I'm still kind of nervous. I realize it's only a dollar, but I'm trying to play it up for, dr for drama. It'd be burnt. If it burns, they owe me four quarters. <laughs> The alcohol itself burns rather quickly, but fortunately, I don't see any singes. I, okay, thank you. I can tell you that while it was on fire, it is unsinged. And I probably need to dry this out before I buy some candy. <laughs> Next is Wooshier Bottle, and we're going to need two volunteers for this. So, 703-522 and 703-473. Pouring out 
the alcohol liquid, all we want inside is the vapor. Uh, I would, Aaron, I would pour a little bit more of the liquid out. There's a little bit more in there. Just for safety purposes. Okay. That should be good. So can I have the lights down, please? So I would cover your ears for this one.
Ready? One, two, three, go. Now it takes a minute, but... So if you look closely at each of these bottles, and they're all the same, they're filled with two things. Water at the bottom and vegetable oil at the top. And so what we've created here are lava lamps. So this is something you can make at home. All you need is an empty two liter bottle or any kind of bottle, vegetable oil, and a little bit of water. And what you have here is a lava lamp. So the Alka-Seltzer makes carbon dioxide gas. The gas comes up through the oil, and that's how you get the bubbles like this. So thank you all of you for participating. Drop your goggles into the box. So what I will do is make one of these really quick. I think one of the things that I unfortunately forgot was food coloring. But it's very easy to do. All you need is vegetable oil and... Oh, thank you. And you can fill it up as much or as little as you need, depending on what you have. And if you add the food coloring, you can actually watch the food coloring go down in through the oil. It's actually fun to do on its own. So a lot of these things are fun to make as well as to actually do. And what I'm going to do is just mix this around a little bit. Now, oil and water don't mix, so that's the basis for this. Oil is nonpolar. It's made of carbon and hydrogen mostly, and it floats to the top. Water is hydrogen and oxygen only, it's at the bottom, and it's going to be two separate layers. Now, while that's going, I'm going to show you one more. And this is a special one that I made. Again, it's relatively the same thing, and if you could lower the lights... Actually, what I will do is move it up here so it's easier to see. The bottom layer here is glowing. So what I did was I took the felt part, the tip of a highlighter, pulled it out and dipped it in the water, and the highlighter fluid is now soluble in water. So now you can make a glow-in-the-dark lava lamp rather than just one that's colored. Now these black lights, they're very inexpensive. This black light itself costs $9.99 at Walmart. And so anytime you have anything that has something like highlighter fluid in it, it's going to glow in the dark. So again, for about $12, the price of the bottle, the oil, and this black light, you can have a glow in the dark lava light. Okay. Now, one of the things that's very important about these is you never close them while you're making gas, because if you think about this compared to the gloves that we had with the dry ice, these would eventually fill up with gas and burst, and then you have a mess of oil and water anywhere, and that's not something you want your parents to clean up. They will not be very happy about that. So, now once I get this put away, at least on the side here, the next group is going to be Heather and Paolo, and they're going to do Screaming Candy. Again, one of my favorites. This is one not for volunteers and not for the main part.
position together. Now, what they're putting in is something called potassium chloride. It also is a source of oxygen. Now, how many people love candy? I, sh I, should, I should probably ask how many people don't like candy, because it's very, you know, a few people, I'm sure. So, what we're going to do is basically see how much energy a gummy bear can create. Gummy bear! So what we have to do first is melt, literally melt, this potassium chloride. This takes a minute or two. Now once we have this melted, the gummy bear will actually drop right in. And you'll be able to see how much energy comes out. Now some of the gummy bear, the gummy bear might come spreading out of this, that's why we have it pointed towards me and not towards the audience. there. So you can actually see the crystal, the solid crystal of the potassium chloride is actually melting. Lights, please. So not only, not only is it making a lot of light and energy, it's also making a lot of smoke. So you know it's still, it's still going. This is the amount of energy. This is why you feel an energy rush after you have sugar. <laughs> to say it mildly. Because there is so much energy you can get from sugar. Your body can digest that sugar in your stomach and that gives you energy. So, most things that have sugar are just pure sugar or sugar and chocolate. But what, what Paolo and Heather are going to do now is not just... Uh, you, can, <laughs> you can just put it, put it uh, way over the corner. Just lay it down on the table. Then. Yeah. Just make sure it doesn't roll off. So, what we do is a peanut m and &M. So, in the center of a peanut... M&M obviously is a peanut. Peanut is made of protein. So we're going to try this one more time. So, so next time that you have candy and you get that energy rush, this is what you can do if you have a strong oxidant and a little bit of fire burn. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. We don't want too much. So the bits 
that you see coming out? That's the peanut breaking apart. There's the peanut.
It, it takes a little bit. I gotta let, let the uh, methyl alcohol. Okay. Out. Now, one of the very important things about alcohols, there are a lot of different kinds of alcohols. Normally, when you think of alcohol, you think of adult beverages. <laughs> adult beverages. Uh, but there are a couple of different kinds of alcohol that you don't want to drink. One of them is this methanol. Drink it, it's a poison. Also, rubbing alcohol. It's okay to put on your skin, it disinfects, it kills bacteria, but you don't want to drink that either because it can be a poison. So, don't drink alcohol. I'll just say that. Don't drink any alcohol. So can we turn the lights down a little bit? Can we have the lights down, please? No, no lights. Hopefully this is cold enough. If not, we'll still cool down some more. If, if, if it's not cold enough, we can just let it cool and you can do the number. No, we're not going to use it with the number. So there's, this is why it's called the Jam Jar Pulse Jet. So that, so that, in essence, it's a small scale version of our Wooster Ball, and it lasts a longer time because the hole at the top is much smaller. Okay, now, this is non-Newtonian fluid. This is the messy one. So, yeah, we can pull it back. We can pull it back. Portable lab benches are a wonderful thing. Okay. So, we need one more volunteer. 703482. So, okay. so you'll notice that. 
that if you try to pull some of this up, it looks like you're pulling up a solid material, and then if you just let it come back down, it looks like slime. But if you add pressure and squeeze it, it feels like you're grabbing a solid material, kind of like silly putty. Second 
the last experiment. The last one is something very special. Well, we need to actually move this, and we're moving over here. Yeah, grab the pen.
else you'll get to take my class. So, the last thing I will say, thank you very much for coming. I hope you had a very good time. Before slime, before, wait, 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 one more thing. Before slime, head out to the auditorium and go this way to my left. Head down, follow the signs and the balloons, and eventually we'll lead you upstairs to the science building and to slime. So thank you for coming in.